I am charged up to welcome Trick, Trip Higgins, who's president of My Life Site, uh, to the stage. And we're going to learn. We're going to learn about uh, the platform that Trip has. But we're also today. I want this to be a discussion about your questions, your fears, your ideas on life plan communities and their costs, because I've been doing this for 33 years and there's a lot of questions uh, about, I don't understand, why is there an entry fee? Why is it this price and, and what am I getting? And so um, today in our discussion, we're gonna dive into this in, uh, in, in great detail. And uh, Trip. Thanks uh, for being here. I uh, I am super charged up about today's discussion because I think we're going to really help a lot of people out uh, and make what is a confusing topic a little less confusing. But before we dive into the discussion, I always like to get to know our panel members a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your story and what led you to your current role at My Life Site. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Steve, and it's been great to uh, to get to know you over the last couple of weeks from our first meeting. Uh, well, uh, as I was introduced, my name is Trip Higgins. I'm from Buffalo, New York. Um, how I got involved in this uh, industry is an interesting one. Uh, started with a, a strong liberal arts education that allowed me to kind of tackle just about any any type of job or um, opportunity. Uh, in 2009. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a beautiful wife and four-year-old twin boys. Um, unfortunately, we were battling third breast cancer, um, which uh, I, I stopped what I was doing. Uh, I took a leave from a job that had me traveling all across the country, and I needed to find something uh, more local. Uh, and luckily enough, uh, community Fox Run Orchard Park uh, had an opportunity. Little did I know uh, in 2009, we're coming off a major financial crisis uh, and they had just been built uh, and opened at the end of 2007. Um, I walked into the senior living business not knowing much about it, um, but coming into community that was at 60% occupancy, which is not great um, and needing to, uh, really kind of understand their strengths. Uh, six months into my tenure, I uh, lost my wife. Our third breast cancer uh, was was too much. Um, but the silver lining is that I got to understand the power of community. And Steve, I appreciate when you do talk about pro-aging community and the name of your business and talking about retirement living as a community uh, entity, because that is important and it's a differentiator. Now, because I firsthand understood the power of community. And my screensaver here is not actually my uh, living room or office. Uh, it was a parking garage for scooters and walkers at the community I was at. And we took that and I had the idea, it was such a beautiful room outside of the linoleum floor and lights that were brighter than the sun and a lot of scooters randomly parked uh, there that this would be a wonderful gallery. Um, and the community and the board of directors, after my wife's passing, uh, decided to create some funds for us to create the gallery and dedicate it to my late wife, wow. uh, of which then I became a curator of a gallery. And my boys and I became part of a greater community, uh, of which, in many cases, people make a decision for senior living based on an event. And Steve, we talked about this, but uh, it's usually a health crisis. It's a fall. It is some major change in your life that now makes uh, senior living more relevant, um, which I think every community is looking to try to make that, that more relevant decision earlier before an event and while you are uh, someone at your prime so that that value is then carried through to the community. Um, so as, as I spent the better part of a decade there, we came from 60% occupancy to you know, essentially as close as you can get to 100%. Um, and did a lot of innovative, you know, uh, parts to bring the community and bring what's the best of the community out and share that story. So the gallery to starting a farmer's market to uh, anything that 
was interesting or that community members had an interest in, uh, we looked to create that um, and share it with the greater community. So then the, the campus we were on became a resource. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to tell that story a lot. Um, and interestingly enough, my way to uh, my life site was that Brad Breeding, the founder of my life site, uh, found it because there was a lack of educational uh, material and certainly third party educational material to help give people a much better understanding of what retirement living was about, questions to ask, understanding the differences between an entry fee based and a not an entry fee, uh, what it covered, how you could use long term care insurance. I mean, it goes on and on. And certainly we'll feel probably a lot of questions here today about that. Yeah, I was one of his first customers. Um, and then as I transitioned away from senior living uh, to explore some entrepreneurial uh, opportunities, uh, we maintained a friendship. And as I saw the development of my life side so come into creating uh, a toolbox of uh, tools that could be used to help people overcome a lot of the barriers and help communities better engage and educate their consumer. Yeah, I was fortunate enough, uh, good timing and great experiences to now be helping run this company uh, and bring the tools we have and our experience you know, to help help everyone. I love it. And uh, yeah, I've, I was very impressed. Uh, I, I've been familiar with my life site for many years, but uh, when our paths crossed and I started playing around with your calculator, I was really impressed with how easy it is to understand. And that's why I think uh, you're going to be an excellent person to lead a discussion on, on this topic here. So um, let's dive into this, but let's, and, and I, I think you might have a slide deck, but, but before we dive into that, let's talk about the, uh, the basics, because um, I think this is one of the main problems that people have when we're, talking about life plan communities and and just so everybody knows the concept of a life plan community is a wonderful one it's where we take independent assisted and nursing and we put it all together on one campus and the concept is that somebody can move in while they're active and independent and be cared for through their entire life now the challenge is when you, you, you start looking at there's entry fees and different monthly fees and things of that nature. Tell us what's going on here and the best that you can with these various different entry fees and monthly fee contracts. Absolutely. And what uh, what's fascinating about it is that uh, no matter where we are and where what level of care we're looking at, um, or what independent community we might be looking at, uh, there's a financial hesitancy of, can I afford it? Uh, and there are barriers that are put in front of that pathway of getting us from where we are to where we need to be uh, and creating that plan. Yeah. And what's interesting is, is a status quo bias. I love psychology and connecting it together uh, because we're all searching for uh, and need Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So shelter and food are, are the most important. And then once that is taken care of, then our lives become much richer and we concentrate on, on more of what uh, you know, makes us as a species uh, pretty fascinating. <laughs> so what, what I found you know, is that people put a lot of barriers and the status quo bias, we create those barriers. It's easier to stay where you are than it is to look to move forward. It's easier to look to the past to find comfort in where you are now. Um, so at my community, not to uh, change it at all, but they had a marketing piece where it was the 12 easy steps. And I said, well, what's easy about 12 steps? I don't know. If, <laughs> like, I want to be taking 12 steps. So how do you sort of understand uh, the differences? Life plan communities do offer that, that one-stop shop. In essence, you know, you're making one primary decision. I'm moving from my house now to a community and any number of residential options from a one bedroom, one bedroom and den, two bedroom or a patio home uh, for an entry fee. And an entry, in essence, that entry fee is mostly primarily transferring the asset of your home, uh, which in many cases over time becomes much less of an asset and more of a liability with repairs and maintenance uh, and also navigating your home. 
if it's a nice one story, uh, you know, floor plan that is easy to get to the bathroom, to the bedroom, to the kitchen, to a living room, awesome. Most likely it's not. I happen to be in my brother's uh, house right now uh, in Brooklyn. Yeah, we have uh, one of my boys is running in the state uh, indoor track meet. Yeah, uh, but he has stairs all over the place. This would not be very friendly. <laughs> be very difficult to get to your laundry room uh, to, to to cook dinner. Now, uh, so in many cases, those like planned communities offer you the ability to trade that asset of a home for a residential option that fits uh, that price point. Plus, your monthly service right now is in many cases all inclusive. It covers dining. It uh, covers all deferred maintenance. So any utility you have, it's not your work and worry, it's the community's. Any uh, appliance you have, it's their responsibility. Any light bulb that is in that unit outside of anything you might bring in is their responsibility to change. You know, it comes with cleaning services. In many cases, taking care of, of that, what I talked about, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's your, your food and shelter are now taken care of because, oh, there's a dining plan usually connected to that uh, that's fairly robust and gives you lots of op opportunities mm -hmm. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, and with that, then you can start enjoying and have time for your exercise classes, the woodworking shop, art classes, uh, talks, programs, events that in many cases are overwhelming at first. You know, and that uh, making that one decision, which is so hard, you know, is made a lot easier because as you transition, 70% of the audience that we're talking to today will need some sort of level of higher care, whether that is assisted living, memory care, or skilled nursing. Uh, and it's wonderful not to have to make three or four different decisions as we age and be able to make one decision and now have a, a team that is working with you and is part of your uh, decision-making process for future care needs and how best to manage that. Excellent. Excellent. And we'll dive into this a little bit more here, but, you know, I want to share one of my favorite uh, uh, community members uh, has, has chimed in here. This is the infamous gene pool. Um, it's, uh, and he says, I'm a resident of a life care uh, uh, CCRC. Yes, the fees are high, but they cover the continuum of care from assisted living, healthcare, nursing home, and memory care if needed at no extra cost, peace of mind at a price, no nickel diming as a fee for service CCRC. Of course, it's not for everyone, but I'm happy to have made that choice. Oh, and FYI, the average age of death here is 92. And, and I think there has been not that it's the, t the ticket to the fountain of youth, but I, I did share when promoting this, there has been some uh, research done on sort of the peace of mind and the, the, and the lifestyle of those that make the choice to move to these communities versus uh, staying at home. And that's not to say that we're advocating against aging in place. Everybody has a choice and we're trying to to spell out some of the choice. So thanks, Gene, for uh, chiming in there. Uh, Gene's yeah. attends a lot of our discussions and I had no idea that he was living in a life plan community. So that's uh, <laughs> effective. Um, uh, that's awesome. It, Gene, Gene did point out a, a, an important piece. So with, within life plan communities, there are primarily three plans. Now, one is a type A plan where that entry fee can be 90% refundable and your monthly service rate stays the same outside of some operational cost increases each year, much like inflation, stays the same no matter what level of care you go to. So important to note, you could come into an apartment uh, that maybe cost twenty-five dollars to $3,000, and that's what your rate would be outside of an operational cost for assisted living, which in many cases can be six to $7,000, or memory care, which can be eight to nine or skilled nursing, which can be anywhere from 10 to 15 and, and higher. Uh, so a, a life plan type A contract will not only allow you the entry fee to be refunded, so that primary asset still being yours and part of your financial legacy, but your monthly service rates now are much more predictable. Uh, and in some cases, this is sort of the dream of your financial advisor, if you have one, because now they know what your costs will be into the future. 
Yeah, and that's certainly something with one of the tools we've developed, we can talk about a little bit later, uh, how that works. Um, and I just found a uh, article on your website. It says, how do, uh, here, I'll share the screen. And uh, um, how do CCRC payment structures work where you detail type A, type B, type C? I drop that into chat there if anybody wants to reference it. So that can give you some more resources and details there. And um, um, hopefully that'll help. We've, I, I not surprising, and I love it, is we're g getting some questions. So I think Trip, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to dive into your website, but I think probably when we start answering some of these questions, it's going to give us a very relevant reason to dive in and learn more about it. Um, Kathy says, does a CCRC allow a person to live independently and as their needs change due to aging, allow the person to receive assistance without having to physically move to a higher level of care. Um, okay, so, uh, well, I'll let you comment on that, um, but the concept here would be you move into an independent apartment and assisted in nursing could be provided in that same apartment. Uh, Trip, you've, you've got, you know, hundreds of communities that you visited. Is that a model that's that's out there now? It's it's becoming a bit more popular. Yeah, it does come with its its pitfalls. You know, in many cases, people will allow either private aides to be hired, or communities are looking at at bringing more services into you know the independent living apartment. And a lot of times, they'll refer to that as an activity of daily living your ADLs, you might've heard that, uh, that phrase. Yeah, what, what it can do is it can artificially it increase the, the average age. Uh, and, and in some cases, some communities manage the process of, of not uh, having the in, independent living in their community all of a sudden become uh, sort of one level of care all over. Now, where there are there are needs for 24-hour nurses, there are advantages uh, to being sometimes within your level of care and specific part of the campus based on just what they can do and the type of activities of daily living you need. Now, so I think that there's an evolution uh, in place, but certainly uh, be cognizant that in many cases you can benefit from that level of care and what is needed by being at that space in the community. Doesn't mean that you can't have dinner in the dining room or be able to enjoy the rest of campus. Uh, there is no sort of lock or gate unless you're in memory care, which that's for everyone's uh, protection, primarily that community member. No, uh, but that's a long way to answer that question. So yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> great question. Great. And, and also, you know, I, I, I know we got Gene Poole who lives in a uh, life plan community. We've, I see Becky Bees from Roland Park Place is here. Got a few other um, life plan communities that are here. Feel free in chat to sort of drop in how your communities work. I think that can really aid in, in our conversation there. But you don't have to, but if you're, you're interested in sharing. Okay, so Kathy, uh, another Kathy asks, if a fee-for-service retirement community does not ask a resident to leave, even if it, they outlive their funds, why is a life plan type A community more financially ad advantageous? Okay, so- Can you read that one more time? Okay, if a fee-for-service retirement community, okay, so now fee-for-service would be, I move in probably a minimal entry fee and you pay one price for independent, one for assisted, one for nursing does not ask a resident to leave even if they outlive their funds, okay? Why is a life plan community, a type A, more financially advantageous? Well, uh, it depends. It's not a, there's not necessarily a direct answer there, uh, but uh, a type A and a fee-for-service, you know, if they, they do allow, certainly the type A's 
guarantee you care for life, regardless of whether your finances run out or not. Um, in many cases, your goal isn't to run out of your finances. Your goal is to be able to maintain and and live live that life. I think the uh, the type A contract will uh, stretch your finances further by maintaining a monthly service rate. And certainly Becky Bees and I've had this conversation about understanding the right size of apartment you need, not necessarily trying to transfer from the square footage of your house to the square footage of the apartment, but right size it based on what and how you want to live your life. You know, and in many cases, a smaller apartment uh, can help you not only stretch your, your finances, but you're still taking advantage of everything that that community offers. You know, and it's very Frank Lloyd Wright-ish, right? He never wanted you in your room or uh, apartment as much. He wanted you out doing and being on his grounds and yeah, on his properties. Yeah, and 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 I think one of these, Kathy, with that question, number one, I'm glad you asked it more so so that everybody in the audience is, begins to sort of understand that there's these different types of contracts. But the important thing is, just as if we were shopping for apartments, condos, or single family homes, one size does not fit all. Everybody's financial picture is a little bit different. Their, their ability to, like in the case of an entry fee, your preference might be fee for service just because you don't want to um, let go of the that those assets for an entry fee but um but hopefully in today's conversation we all kind of figure out what these various options are um again gene pool jumping back in again uh note that the part of the entry fee and the monthly fees are tax deductible is advanced healthcare expenses for us as a couple the monthly fee is deductible the deductible portion is over forty thousand dollars a year so um, that's that's great to know. And again, as you're looking into these various options, uh, consult with your financial advisor, your tax professional. But uh, and and if they don't know about that, and you're looking at this option, make sure that they know about that. Um, the um, uh, okay, Mitchell says. Have you found any significant differences in quality of services delivered by for profit? versus nonprofit communities. Uh, th this actually, this yesterday we had a um, discussion on nursing home abuse and neglect. This question came up and um, uh, the way it was answered yesterday is, you know, at the end of the day, for-profits and nonprofits, everybody needs to be financially viable. Y you know, I, I think it's important don't put a blanket over one of those categories or the other, but do your research and find, you know, find the community that you're comfortable with and then ask questions. What, what are your thoughts on this trip? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great way to answer that question because it, it, it does depend. I think one of the areas you could look at is, is how much is invested back into a community. So a non nonprofit, uh, the vast majority of, of any revenue is received is invested back in to the community and to those community members. Now, so I would, and certainly for profits, you know, they need to stay competitive and they, they need to offer many of the same services and they need to be almost uh, hard to find a difference. So I would look at, at what is invested back into the communities, look at the facilities themselves, uh, you know, understand their occupancy rates, you know, and and see how they're investing in themselves, right? We all take care. Sometimes the cobbler is the last one to take care of itself or make the shoes for his kids. You want to make sure that uh, these communities are investing back in themselves and you know, taking care of the future product and the current one, which and, is serving uh, you. And uh, Becky from Roland Park Place chimes in here, and she's saying the community is often also limited as to what type of care can be provided based on their license. So the pr previous question about getting assisted living in your independent apartment, um, given the limits of the state or wherever that community is, might be what uh, restricts them from doing that um, in, in the manner that I think, described. 
It can. I, I know there's some latitudes with hiring private aides that aren't necessarily related to the community itself. Um, but in some cases, there can be safety issues as well. So, uh, you know, you might find that your stove is unplugged and nothing uh, that might be a fire hazard is now a, a part of uh, your apartment. But yeah. OK, it's uh, an evolved question. Yeah. Let's see. We got tons of questions here, but but I think let's before we get too deep in this, let's take a peek at my life site because that'll probably prompt some more questions. And um, I want folks to sort of see the tool that you all have created because um, I'd never really seen anything like like it before in in this category, and that may. Um, answer some of the questions that I see in the queue here. Uh, while you're loading that up. I, um, Let me share my screen here. Okay, good. That, yep, that work? got it. Yep. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually uh, our, our tools on the back end of our website. I think you can see this screen now. Uh, is that correct, Steve? Yep. Yep. So our, our primary site uh, is, is sort of uh, bridging the gap between uh, educational for the prospects looking to find communities, learn a little bit more about CCRCs or retirement living communities, uh, giving you opportunities uh, for numerous articles, uh, our blog post, we certainly highly rec recommend people signing up for that. Uh, it's a great way to have yeah, be engaged each week with a new topic uh, and become that educated consumer, which uh, is our, our goal. Um, you can see here, we ask and ask a lot of questions and have answers for each one. Um, you know, obviously as you roll through here, this is a pretty easy down and dirty way to uh, sort of familiarize yourself. Now from there, our blog posts are many. Now, uh, and each week you'll uh, you'll see more and more that can be related to some of the topics that are more apt for the community itself to then also uh, connecting to uh, questions that a prospect and consumer uh, might have as well. Now, what uh, what you had found, Steve, when we looked at the the home page, uh, is our our calculator, you know, which right here it was designed for that. Find that primary question of, is this affordable? How does that entry fee work? Uh, and I would uh, caution people not to disqualify yourself before you've actually had a conversation with the community. Yeah, uh, because all that we've talked about in many cases, these communities are making more of an investment in you than in many cases you're making in that community. Yeah, uh, so know that together you can make the best decision uh, for what uh, what place or what uh, community might be the best for you or what level of care might be the best. Now, um, and actually, I, I don't even know if, I don't think you can click on this. Can you, Steve, or? Um, I, I can't not. click on your screen. You can't. No, no. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll run through this. So Money Gauge was designed, this is a, a front facing calculator. So to look at it, this would be uh, Roland Park Place. So where Becky is, yeah, this is her page that has, this tool is finding the right fit affordability calculator. Yeah. So what we can do here is get back to our site and I'll run through our primary assessment. This is meant to be an engagement tool. So a lot of the times you get onto a website and what do they want? They want you to book a tour. They want you to you know, come in and have an appointment. And here is a good way to uh, get through the hurdle of financial hesitancy. So uh, we can go to my life site and you can utilize this tool, but then there are, you know, hundreds of retirement communities throughout the country that have this embedded on their site with the specific purpose for people to know whether or not they're qualified and this is an option that they should continue having a dialogue with. Absolutely. We, uh, we hate to see financial hesitancy be a reason for people not pursuing uh, a, a good choice in retirement living communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've done, and this works for entry fee based life pl plan communities to rental communities, to even the at home programs 
that um, more and more coming across the uh, the country. So what this does is it begins quickly and easily with a question. Now, we have used some preliminary numbers. I know somebody popped up with a question of, of entry fees. In many cases, communities can start at 100,000 and they can certainly go up depending on the size of the unit. Usually that entry fee is based on square footage and potentially location within the campus. Now, we started with a corresponding monthly service rate of $2,750. Now, again, these are then customized uh, to each community's price points and based on their residential units. Now, so as we go through here, simply ask the question, are you an individual or a couple? Now, we do find that it's either the direct prospect that is entering this information or maybe it's a loved one. Uh, if we pick a couple here, we hit next, we then ask for people's age. Now, so from here, what we're finding is about the average age of people filling out our assessments. And no, interesting enough, last year we had just shy of 100,000 assessments taken, mm. uh, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, it shows that th this is definitely a, a question on everyone's mind. Yeah, this question, we, we do start our calculations at 65. That's where most people will be on Social Security and, and start uh, receiving uh, those type of benefits. We then ask if you are looking to sell your home. In many cases, uh, the majority are. And from there, we then ask what the primary equity would be in that house. You know, and here it can be anywhere in ranges. We can go up all the way to just a little over 2 million. We found that these ranges, we're not looking for an exact amount. We're looking for that range. So as we go through here, let's maybe say uh, 500 to 550. Now, the next question will now be looking at the approximate household savings of your, uh, not only cash savings, but also your retirement accounts. And these are all then kept safe within our system uh, and shared through uh, encrypted links to the community to be able to then uh, move forward with, well, and, uh, and actually, with your first meeting. One of the things I liked about this calculator when I did it off your site is, is that you never asked me for an email address. Um, is that correct? Yeah, so it, uh, it goes both ways. So we have, we have uh, some communities don't ask for a name uh, or email or phone number. Some do. And we're finding, uh, interesting enough, uh, when communities ask, they have an unbelievable amount of people that actually agree because this ends up being something that they really oh, yeah, want yeah. an but, answer for. But for those folks that wanted to play with this, if you go to my life site, there it's- Correct. It, off your site, it's totally confidential. Um, the uh, and uh, just if you wanted to play around with it, and I had a good time playing around with it myself. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, and, that, and we'll as we get through it, this uh, what you're asking uh, about will become a little bit more relevant. So, here we look at Social Security, yeah, uh, this is the after tax and withholding deductions. So, we find uh, this range of 20. 200 to 2400 uh, to be a good one. Second person might be a little less, might be about the same. Uh, next question would be if anybody had a pension. Some people might, some people might not. Yeah. And then we added a question about those that might have long term care insurance. Yeah. One thing I note is that we look at the dollar amounts at your daily rate. If you know what your daily rate is, multiply that by 30. Uh, and that'll give you somewhere, you know, for the most part, around 5,000, sometimes more. Uh, in many cases, people that have had a long-term care policy for a while have been asked whether or not uh, they want to continue with an inflationary adjusted coverage, of which sometimes the costs become maybe too exorbitant. Uh, so they, they choose not to have that uh, be yeah. covered through uh, inflation. We've done uh, and let's say the second... Yeah, we've done some discussions yeah. on that and make sure that you talk to some advisors when you get that uh, uh, that that letter in the mail. Correct. Yeah. So after this, you know, we then submit and this is where uh, there would either be uh, what we would refer to as a, uh, a sign in sheet you know, or what we're seeing here is you get directly to our gauges and these gauges show 
what unit type might be affordable based on the numbers that you put in. Based, and I can show you the back end of what this looks like uh, and how we go about calculating these numbers to be truly a lifetime affordability. Yeah, because few, few uh, calculators have the ability to use actuarial tables that look at a predictor of your, your age into the future. Yeah, to then connect it to a whole slew of economic assumptions that I can show you as to what creates the reliability. Because that's the key to this calculator is the reliability of its uh, prediction of future costs and helping give you a preliminary nature of what is affordable and what might work. All right. Um, and then if you click that, I think if you click the button, find CCRCs and life plan communities, um, then you will bring up a, okay, so then you've got a uh, uh, regional directory. And correct is, is when, when we click on something like that, like click let for, is, is it a comprehensive listing or, or is this a, a paid, this was a question that came in from Deb. Correct. All the CCRCs in, the, on your site are, are they comprehensive or are they paying to be on there? So the, the ones that uh, have paid or are the ones that have the colored versions, but we do have every community within that region. Uh, and as my, my link's just a little slower here, every community, uh, its name will be there now um, so that you can uh, look to search regardless of whether or not okay. they have chosen to put their information on the site and uh, give you a connection. So this would be looking at who potentially is paid in that region yeah, uh, to then a the listing of everybody else that hasn't. So you know, that's good. It's on a this comprehensive listing, and if you see one on there, you can always do a Google search on them if they don't have the details. But I've I've always I've, I'm impressed with the detail that you have on those um, those listings. You've got quite a bit of information. There, uh, there is, and and uh, one of the nice things here too is we can look at contract types. Yeah. Uh, so you can search and apply filters to fee for service versus life care uh, versus modified fee for service. So this is a great, great way to educate uh, yourself there to also we can look at searching studio apartments, cottages, villas, homes, freestanding. Okay. Uh, great. To even getting into amenities provided, which is an extensive list mm -hmm. to looking at interests and hobbies and tax statuses. This would be the nonprofit for profit. Now, it's a lot of information there. Yeah. That helps. And this gauge, interestingly enough, um, in the back end, this is what uh, a community will see. You know, and we'll go to our test communities. And from here, we'll go to our, our website. Oh, sorry. Go to our test communities. And that, so I was beginning to say, uh, on average, uh, if a conversion rate is measured uh, by the number of people that have taken your assessment, uh, much like a direct mail piece, the number of mail pieces you've sent out to how many people then reply to that. And anywhere from a 2 to 3%, 4% is usually pretty acceptable. Yeah, we're finding that when we put a contact sheet in front of those gauges, that we're averaging a 30% conversion rate. Now, which just, it's really hard when I say it, people are like, that's not even true. How can that be possible? But we're finding that it's an important enough question where people do want to understand uh, and give that, uh, that community uh, the understanding and, and themselves, what is affordable and where, uh, where's my next step? Yeah. It, it, um... That doesn't, I mean, I know it might be shocking to some people, it doesn't shock me because an educated consumer is more than likely going to, they've narrowed down a decision. And if you've evaluated, hey, I like every, I like what I see here, I qualify financially, now let me take it to the next step. We, we see a similar, uh, if somebody 
uses Sourcebook and they actually call somebody out of this directory, they've seen every single senior living place in the region. And so there's a high probability that they're going to make that choice. Um, right. And here are your examples. I mean, this is what people have taken this test today. This, this uh, filled out those questions. This is what I filled out to somebody that's starting at 775,000 in assets, age 75 to 72, with the social security of 2,300, 2,100, uh, long-term care benefit. That uh, 775,000 plus the 525, living in a, a one bedroom can turn into over 2 million at the end of their life, uh, or depending on the size of the apartment. And we can show you here uh, the high-end pricing. Uh, these are all the calculations that we go through uh, yeah. to be able to give you the result that you see. I know. I hope no one gets dizzy as I scroll up through here. Well, yeah. And I what ends up okay. <laughs> what ends up happening is this is the cash flow statement of showing somebody at age seventy five and seventy two coming in with inflationary adjusted income uh, to then looking the inflationary adjusted expenses of a community. So starting at sixty seven. Uh, starting at age 75 or 72, lived to age 87. Their income dropped a little bit as the spouse passed away, but together, uh, inflationary adjusted, their 67 became 85,000 a year 14. That community's expenses independently became 87 to 116, and then uh, 140 in the final year of their actuarial life. We look at uh, the net income shortfall which most people have needing to borrow from their assets to cover their lifestyle. Uh, the beginning balance of their assets, you know, we can then see how that ended up over time. Uh, and with 16 years spent at that community, they've been taken care of at the highest level of care and anything that they needed uh, was there and accessible and it becomes very affordable. No one is running out of money. The entry fee was a declining balance of which is then kept by the community. Uh, but this is a good financial fit. And we usually use a scenario to look at what your final year uh, net income shortfall is. And in comparison to how many years of assets do you have left to cover that? You know, so simply uh, put there is a good, good view at our, our back end, you know, uh, and how we, uh, we look to, uh, and um to help people understand affordability i love it and we got a boatload of questions coming in so i would say keep these uh keep those links handy and let's try to uh dive into some of these and the best that we can um let's see someone says thank you so much for sharing your bright guiding light star journey and managing your family season to change transformation of the room with linoleum floors, breathing more light, um, it's very peaceful and and whole. Um, I agree, Trip. Uh, your personal story is uh, definitely one that I think a lot of people on this um, the our discussions can resonate with. Our 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 uh, number one topic that we talk about is solo aging and the. Uh, you encountered solo aging much at a much younger age than most of us would ever imagine, but um, how you've reinvented yourself and the fact that you've uh, stumbled into this uh, profession is, um, we're, we're glad for that. Um, okay, let's see, somebody, somebody says, how do the communities get on your site? Are there, are there site visits to ensure quality? Okay, so uh, we, uh, and I guess that would be in relationship to uh, our directory. our search communities yeah. here, the directory. So uh, these questions, we, uh, they more than likely match the, the website uh, themselves. We, we do have an opportunities to come and visit some of these communities. Yeah, we used to do a uh, long time ago and it became a bit more onerous uh, do uh, fiscal uh, audits uh, and understanding the 990s of a lot of these communities uh, and where where their finances stood. Now, uh, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, that uh, that wasn't sustainable. 
as a business. You know, this does tend to be sustainable and, and the best communities are gonna tell their story and tell their authentic story of what their personality is, how many independent units they have. Now, you know, certainly there are, we, we do like to double check sometimes with their disclosure statements. And that's how we, we make sure that nothing here is, um, is being said that isn't true necessarily. Yeah. But a lot of cases, there's, there is some trust involved. I know that's a, a rare commodity these days, but in senior living, uh, we, are, we are trusting a lot of people to be able to uh, well, deliver on their promise. I've got somewhat of a, a slightly similar model with our source book. And what we found is, is that if a community reports pricing that's not accurate and a consumer calls, uh, they're like, why are you saying that you're this much per month? And then it usually gets the ball rolling. And so uh, if, you know, again, if you all are using Trips tool or my tool and you see something that's not accurate, let the community know, but let us know too. And, and we can reach out that uh, to make that change. Um, let's see. Uh, Barbara uh, asks, if life plan communities found it difficult to find help like most places? Uh, they, they certainly have. Um, although, and it's interesting, in a lot of my talks across the country, uh, it's, it's a lot easier for a community like that to hold on to people and to find people than it is for an individual, in many cases, to try to find somebody and hold on to them, uh, where you're, you're much more of a risk uh, trying to manage that yourself than, than the community is. And certainly they are putting a ton of time and energy. In most cases, I see uh, websites, the first thing that pops up, we're hiring. <laughs> yeah. We're looking for people. So there's an aggressive push to make it's, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not unique to um, the life plan communities, senior living communities, but I've seen some really creative programs on ways to retain staff and things of that nature. And you, you know, these these questions that you're asking us are also the questions you want to be asking when you start to narrow down your selection to two or three uh, communities is, you know, ask that same question, Barbara. And Barbara, I can tell you're going to get the gold star today because I see three more questions in the queue. Let's let's run through them. Uh, she, she, and, and folks in the audience, feel free to type in if you've got feedback on Barbara's question uh, that I'm going to about to read, jump in with your, your comments. Um, she asks, if a CCRC only provides one meal a day, how do residents get their two meals? Um, so it sounds like she's investigated a life plan community that only offers one meal. And I think, Trip, you referenced two meals a day. Yeah, well, uh, what, what's interesting is, is usually it's a point system. So a lot of the cases, the salesperson will simply say it's, it's covering one meal a day. Well, in essence, those points could be split for a lighter breakfast and lunch, or it's, you know, the, the points could be for the, the, the largest dinner size or the smallest dinner size. But what I've found is most community members did a nice job of um, separating that out with uh, a smaller, smaller breakfast to a dinner or a smaller breakfast and a lunch. And in essence, uh, using those points up, uh, but know that communities aren't necessarily using that as your only meals where you are able to pay for extras. Uh, and in many cases, they do have uh, smaller uh, sort of gift shops that do have uh, food items that can be easily purchased. And I guess one of the benefits too from uh, the pandemic is that a lot more grocery stores and stores deliver directly to communities. At first, it only used to be the uh, liquor store that would deliver. Now it, uh, <laughs> now it, now it is the grocery store as well. All right. But know that independently, you do have full kitchens, and, and usually everybody has a stocked fridge of some sort. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I got two more questions from Barbara. If a residence to a life plan community, how do they find new doctor? Uh, okay, so if you doctors. move to a life plan community, how do you find new doctors to replace the doctors they had in their old community? Sure. In, in many cases, that would be that they moved out of town. Because mm -hmm. uh, in many cases, everybody keeps their same doctors. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that you have to give up. 
Uh, in some communities, they are bringing and they do have uh, a uh, a doctor's office on site or doctors that can come in and use that as their uh, their site. But for the most part, you don't have to change your doctors. Great. And uh, let's see, Barbara's last question is, would a life plan community ever eject a resident who runs out of funds? Is there any medical condition which would require a resident to be moved out of a, a life plan community? Uh, I have not heard of, of any medical condition um, that would remove somebody outside of possibly anything that would potentially harm other community members. Uh, if there were behaviors that uh, were detrimental to the greater community, mm -hmm. uh, but health-wise, meaning more medical, um, skilled nursing oriented, no. And in many cases, if you run out of funds, that's one of the, the safety nets of a true life care community is that you are cared for for life. So uh, you will not be kicked out. And I, I did a story many years ago of, of a woman who didn't think she could, her friends lived in a life plan community. She didn't think she could afford it, but her social security and her teacher's pension paid the monthly fee and her the home and her savings got her entry fee. And she was able to take advantage of a scholarship fund so that let's say that they were going to a play or something of that nature, she could very discreetly ask for money um, from that fund if she needed it. And I've heard about a lot of programs like that and maybe some of the like yeah. communities on our- I, 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 like the, I like the term scholarship. That seems much better than a lot of cases called, the, a lot of communities call it the benevolent fund, mm -hmm. uh, which sort of have its roots in hundreds of years ago. Uh, but there is fundraising. In many cases, community members will, at the end of their lives, donate the entry fee that is refundable to them back to the community to be used to help fund you know, community members that might run out of, of money. All right. And uh, I've, got, I've got a question and then I'm going to jump on the chat. But uh, this question, uh, Trip, you alluded to, uh, th this person says, do CCRCs without walls, which can also be referred to as continuing care at home, provide anything other than what essentially amounts to long-term care insurance, how can I find a list of these communities? Um, uh, to that person that asked that question, I dropped in a discussion that we had on this topic. Again, it's, I mean, we devoted a full over an hour on that one too, but um, any, any, you had talked about uh, continuing care at home trip, but uh, anything that you'd like to chime in about on, on that topic? I, uh, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the times, what their the better communities are trying to engage you more and more on their on their campus. Now, I think you know, it is primarily a long term care insurance product, and it was developed for the most part because the penetration rate of an age and income qualified primary market area only about three percent of those people were choosing to move to a life care community. So the at home program was primarily designed to as a feeder system for the 97% that chose not to you know, and give them some protection and give them experiences within the community. Yeah. You know, and I find that the better programs are the ones that connect you to that community more. Because you know, regardless of whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, it's great to see other people throughout the day. I think we've realized the strength of that over COVID as well. Great. And um uh, let's see, Joan says, I believe that leading age can provide a list of the continuing care at home, and uh, I will find that link. I think I've seen it too, and um, I'll drop it in if you're interested in in this topic. Thanks for sharing that, Joan. Um, the, uh, uh, let's see, Dixie sa asks or says, my experience as a nurse care manager is that folks living in an independent unit who decline and need private aids are typically asked to go to assisted living or skilled nursing and not remain in independent living. It takes a fight to remain in your independent apartment. I, um, I, I would agree. And that historically, that is exactly what happens. Um, and it's, it's usually for the, the benefit of that community member. 
um, but but more and more are are looking at ways to uh, to find a healthy balance between that. Yep. Uh, but I would I would definitely agree with Dixie. Um, okay. All right. And uh, okay. So let me. Okay. Dixie has another thing. She says with fewer seniors boomers able to afford long-term care insurance do you anticipate a shift in who can fill life plan communities currently many in the dc area have vacancies and um uh, any any sort of thoughts on that i um uh the numbers are gigantic uh, so in many cases we're probably we don't have enough uh available units to uh to handle the influx of, of the, the bigger wave of baby boomers. Uh, but affordability, the marketplace usually shakes out um, and, and helps develop uh, affordable products. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I've seen that evolution since I've, I've started. And I think, I think one of the things that you, um, your calculator at first glance, it's very easy to look at life plan communities and say, wow, this, you know, you see an entry fee, your, your mortgage might be paid off and you're sort of like, no way, you know, and that's the thing that I like about trips calculator. It's, it's a tool that you can plug in your actual numbers and then you can determine, is this something that's affordable or is it within my budget? Or is this something that is cost prohibitive? And that's, what did you call it? Financial hesitancy? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, that, that, is, that, that is a sort of a silent uh, deterrent that, that uh, people avoid the status quo. They will, will not fear for fear of being rejected or the unknown, right? The uneducated. We talked about an educated consumer is our best customer. Uh, the more that you can feel comfortable in your decision and know uh, that you haven't disqualified yourself before ever trying is the best bet. Okay. And we're getting a lot of questions about continuing care at home, which leads me to believe that I'm going to be doing another discussion on that. I gave you guys our first discussion, but um, uh, the I can never pronounce her last name, but it's D. Pakurin. Uh, and she's with Leading Age, and I'm dropping her email into uh, chat there. If you want a complete list of the cur current providers doing continuing care at home, D should be Pe Pecrin. Pecrin. Okay. Thank you, whoever uh, shared that with You've me. You've got a great group here. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, is. Very this is community right here. You yeah, are exactly. feeling the power of community. Yeah, yeah, and and um, uh, let's see. Um, okay, uh, and Bernie says I joined a bit late. How can one access the calculator, Bernie? Right there on the screen. It's mylifesite.net, and then you see right there where it says money gauge. You click that calculator and it says begin assessment. Um, okay, let me get back to. Um, oh, let's. I'm going to work from the bottom up here. Uh, Elva, sure. Uh, Just quick. Yeah. Quickly, so for Bernie's sake, know that this is a, a very generalized uh, assessment where each community that has brought this uh, as one of the tools for their community, you'll get a much, much better uh, view as to what, what is affordable at, at a specific community. Well, it would be, yeah, because the, the community can take your tool and they can plug their numbers and their, their platform into it, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. But, but, I, but I think for a general kind of, hey, I'm, I'm wondering about life plan communities. I, I don't know if there's anything else out there, folks, that are like this. And if you go to your financial planner, it's going to be like, you know, he's, he or she has to get educated on this if they're not already familiar with it. Um, right. Let's see. Okay. I'm trying to get through here. Okay. Um, okay. So, Kathy, you're, I, I, I would contact D about your question about uh, the life uh, community without walls. Um, uh, let's see, Lisa, Lisa asked, what is a typical entry fee? 
is it as it sounds a one-time fee? Like, is there a, a national average of entry fees? And and I, I believe Lisa, they are um, they are one-time fees. But are are yes. communities breaking it down? Uh, so they they are they are one-time fees. Yeah, you know, and I'll show you the back end as to how this would would work off of a, a price sheet from a community. Yeah, you know, it's gonna move a few things around here, but uh, on the residential options, you start with whether or not they're a type A contract or not. If they're a rental community, they won't have necessarily an entry fee this large. They might have a one month's uh, deposit. You know, and then we look at the independent living fees where with a type A contract, that rate is the same outside of operational costs increases for all levels of care. Now, we even tie in here additional costs that might happen at, uh, at a healthcare uh, level of care for food and then ancillary costs for expenses above and beyond what's covered on the independent side. Now, that fee of 100,000, it's a pretty, pretty decent uh, starting point. And then for the larger residences, it can be 500,000 and up and many can be more. Now, what's interesting, if, if this is not a type A contract, now what ends up happening is that the rates here will adjust. And if we uh, adjusted it to be uh, a primary assisted living, you might be looking at, at we'll say 8,000 at this point, and that would be with a higher level of care and then a skilled nursing, private pay might be closer to 15,000. Uh, and normally this rate would be you know, you know, roughly, you know, doing a little calculation, this could be, we like to say about 30% of you know, the monthly service rate covers usually a good you know, good meeting. So this would be more of a private pay where you are paying uh, a fee for service where you're paying an independent monthly fee where it jumps up to uh, a more normalized fee, uh, rate of care um, and on, on up to skilled nursing. But now these numbers. in general, in your experience, most fee for service don't have uh, a large entry fee. Correct. Okay. Got it. Not not as not not as high, although they might have different. Uh, some might be refundable, others might not be refundable. In most cases, these are not, uh, as we put it. But if I edited this and we said, actually, the refundable ability option is Holy is ninety percent. <laughs> All right, I, we're I can't believe we're over an hour. Well, we're I over an hour. I know, but but actually, include let, let's. Um, if you can hang on for a bit, um, sure, absolutely. So you had an ex uh, you had a screen that had all of the different models. Um, it was you know it was up on the screen there, like the different type A, type B, whatever. Um, and and somebody said, "Are are you going to explain the different models?" Um, the um, if, and this would be when we looked at uh, the uh, yeah, yeah the contract uh, types contract types yeah so so let's just let's just go through this okay so just life care um, so walk walk us through each of these <laughs> okay well so life care as briefly as possible yeah. <laughs> Because obviously there there's a lot of a lot of bits and pieces to it all, but uh, this is a great start. So life care uh, is a model where that uh, entry fee uh, locks in a monthly service fee apart from inflationary increases uh, and other ancillary expenses. So that rate is what follows you for all levels of care, which is great. Uh, an equalized rate one is very similar, although. Uh, if you are paying uh, for the highest level uh, or highest or largest size of apartment, you might actually pay a little bit less going into assisted living and skilled nursing. 
So they equalize the rates out uh, based on averages of lowest to highest, and they end up somewhere in the middle. A modified fee for service, yeah, similarized to the, the equalized rate. You pay a discounted rate for your care services when needed, uh, but uh, the discount may apply to a certain number of days in care before full service begins. This can be, in many cases, referred to as a type C contract, where the entry fee might be a little bit less, the monthly service fee might be a little less, uh, but you are guaranteed care at that select rate for a period of time. Now, fee for service is just like it sounds. There is an entry fee, in many cases less than a life care fee, uh, but you will pay full market rate for all of your care services. Now, so your monthly service rate might be equivalent to, or maybe a little bit less than the independent living fee of a type A contract person, but you will be paying a uh, full market rate going forward. Yeah, equity models, I haven't seen as many of these, but this would be an ownership model. In many of the cases, the top four that I just talked about, you have lifetime use of that apartment, uh, but you're not gaining any equity, uh, and that isn't then your responsibility. In many cases, these ownership models, you're responsible for selling that unit in some cases, uh, after your time at that community, uh, but you do then end up getting uh, your other services, your monthly services will apply for your care services and are typically offered under a fee for service type model. Yeah, there's uh, a few of those. So this is in the yeah, in response to some people saying, well, I want ownership. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, at least you're on the campus and that's important too, right? Community cannot be underrated. Uh, so then, and then the rental, no entry fee. So okay. these are just strictly monthly service fees uh, that are all at full market rates, but in many cases they won't have continuing care. So might not have the assisted memory or skilled nursing. Okay, uh, so now don't don't take this screen down because Kathleen says, how do these contract types relate to the contract types A, B, and C? So in general, the A contract, is that life care? Okay. Yes. And And then... The C contract is fee for service, right? Fee for service, and sometimes it's modified fee okay. for service because you do get a, a bit of a discount on an entry fee and you have a number of days at your independent living re rate. Okay. Usually that's for, uh, covers the long-term care insurance in many cases, their waiting period. Mm -hmm. The 90 days might be uh, what covers you. Uh, before your long-term care insurance program can take shape. And then the B, the B level contract, is that life care with equalized rates? Uh, can be, or it can be just uh, uh, looked at uh, as a, another version of the life care where it's a declining balance of an entry fee, uh, not fully refundable. Okay. Well, it, I, like I said, I, I think this is going to be the first of many discussions we have on this topic oh. uh, because it's, it is very confusing, but um, let me, okay, so. so ha Happy to do it again because we, we work with some communities that have nine different plans available. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure how they sell it because that's a lot. <laughs> okay. And then. Uh, uh, Cheryl, this is recorded, and so we'll we will send a link to everybody. Um, uh, let's see. Steve says I joined late. Does Trips Firm review life plan contracts? If not, who would he recommend? These contracts are large and can be confusing. Um, do, do you offer that as a, a service trip? Uh, I often refer elder law attorneys are a, a resource that can go through a contract with people? I would, I would say that would probably be the best resource. Um, and certainly there are a lot of contracts. We used to do a lot more of that, uh, but have, have focused in other areas to, to help a broader audience uh, okay. out. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a core of our business. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay. Um, Heather says, when you speak of 100,000 assessments taken, is that the amount of people who completed the form? Well, the assessments would be people that completed the questions 
the those that then gave their name would be on average 30 percent okay uh, some but, communities but, are more some but that's a lot of data you know that's a lot, a lot of, of data filling that out uh so that's 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 good um let's see jim asks about quality metrics how safe depending on sa staffing levels um Jim, I, I, there's so many great ideas that I've got for future discussions here. Uh, and 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 given how long we've been on, Jim, I want to address that, but feel free to send me or Trip an email. And if we can help you with evaluation, we will. Um, uh, my friend Gene Poole says, huge caution, don't wait too long to make the move. Uh, and, and folks who tuned in late, Gene. Uh, this is what we hear more than anything, but Gene lives in a life plan community and he's been contributing. So uh, check his, his comments in there. He says, huge caution. Don't wait too long to make a move. Best to be young enough and healthy enough to be an active member of the community. All too often, people wait until they are frail and many of them have to enter healthcare or pass away um, without experiencing the community. And then I hear a lot of stories uh, of where folks delay and some life plan communities only accept people in as an independent living resident because they want the assisted and the nursing to be reserved to take care of their independent re residents. So sometimes people will drag their feet, then they'll have a healthcare problem. Hey, I'm ready to move in now. And it's like, well, you can't move in directly to our assisted living. Do you find that? Uh, correct? correct. Yes. Yeah. So in many cases with those entry fees uh, and a type A contract where they are caring for you for life at a set rate, essentially, uh, it is about being not only financially qualified and being able to understand that commitment from both parts, because uh, they're making a commitment for you. But health-wise, they want to be looking at making an investment in someone that is going to be contributing and live independently for a long time uh, because certainly there are costs associated with that and and one of the factors with a life care contract in many cases upwards to 40 percent of that monthly service rate can be used actually as a tax deduction because it's considered a future health care payment uh, and that's that's how the, the system works is you need to be independent and healthy coming in now, and hopefully the the community keeps you that way for a very long time because of all the programs and events and uh, just being within uh, that type of energy helps, as you had pointed out in the, your invite for this, that many people uh, live a longer, more productive, happier life. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get through these, uh, these last few comments here, uh, although I think, I, I don't think there's any way we're going to get through them all, but- uh, We'll have to have a part two. Yeah, no, no, we'll definitely have a part two. In, in fact, let me scan through these here. Uh, the back end details that you shared are not available to anybody on the website. Um, th uh, the, ba the back end details of cash flow like statements this. are not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You were, that was behind the curtains. Um, this is behind and, the curtain. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely some conversations about staffing. Uh, again, ask a lot of questions. We're all dealing with staffing, but, um, uh, and, and if when you're touring these places, if you can meet the captain of the ship, the executive director, and sort of get a handle on their philosophy and some of the initiatives that they have to retain and, and keep employees, uh, that's important. Um, Okay, uh, most important assessment is nursing retention. Um, okay, um, Elva was asking what region, oh, you know, when you get to the regions on your website, what region is Texas in? <clears throat> now, let's see, don't have that off the top of my head, but if we were to search communities, And uh, right. v, Barches, v. Barches is saying, um, her comment is, this is a promotion of CCRCs, not an education about them. That's not our intention at all. And yeah. I know that 
I know that, yes, it may look like that because we're looking at different communities and th things of that nature. But what we're trying to our best to do here is to, to sort of pull the curtains behind, here's an evaluation tool. And uh, I, I don't want this to appear as though it's a promotion, but it's helping people uh, make a choice if it's something that's of interest. I can't tell you, I've been doing this for 33 years. I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, I'm really interested in this community, but I'm nervous about the entry fees and the payments. And so we're trying to just give you all some tools to, to if, if this is a choice that you're interested in, here's a way to evaluate it. Okay. So uh, and, Texas. And regardless of, Central. okay. Is in the West Central. So it's, it's, uh, Okay. As you go back here, um, uh, it's in the south. All right. South too. And okay. Uh, okay. All right. And if I, just before that, I think uh, a, a good friend of mine had put it uh, early in my career is there are planners, there are procrastinators, and there are crashers. You know, and hopefully one of the, the other goals of, of a conversation like this is to help people become better planners. And much like Gene had talked about, of, of taking control of, of your future, because without a plan, uh, it won't be your future. <laughs> you will be at, uh, at the mercy of availability of any type of, of care service, uh, and it might not reach the goals that you, uh, you had hoped for. Uh, so planning is your, your best bet uh, against uh, something in the future that's not quite right or to your liking. Yeah, and and Becky, uh, we'll close on this comment because uh, you know yesterday I said, "Geez, we had our longest discussion in 2023, and we just we beat that discussion today." And and uh, but Becky says that most communities will be able to answer your questions and also refer you to other resources if a life plan community is not appropriate. Um, the 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 communities are taking. A, a risk in terms of they need an appropriate match for for their community financially and healthcare and like just the same way that a college you, you know when you're selecting a college but um but but ask a lot of questions and I think you will find as Becky had said that most places are no one's trying to sort of this is not a used car salesperson type business here. People are looking for appropriate matches and people in this field are very um, resourceful and connected. And the thing that the reason that I wanted to share trips tool with you is, is that you can go to the site and you can plug in some numbers and you can have a general idea of where you might lie in the shopping for a life plan community. Um, so uh, I hope that this is helpful. Uh, the fact that we're we're on for an hour and a half tells me we got to dive into this in a little bit more detail. And I might get creative and see if we can recruit some folks like Gene Pool who made the decision and kind of walk through their the steps that they took, um, because that might help people understand how another person just like them made that transition. Yep. There endless options and opportunities and you want to uh, to be able to have the broadest uh, number of those yeah. uh, the longer you wait as gene said the, the less options the less opportunity you have yep yeah. all right trip thanks so much and uh thank you everybody it's uh i i know we didn't get to every question which i usually try to do but this tells me that we're on to something that can be really helpful to people. So I'll work on the next one on this topic and email me if you've got any ideas or resources. Uh, honest, you know, we're trying to be a resource to everybody here. But uh, Trip, great, great connecting and uh, hope you enjoy the track meet this weekend. Yes, thank you very much, Steve. This is a pleasure and look forward to doing it again. Uh, okay. We're about helping people help people. So thank you. You bet.